Hey gang, welcome back. This week we're going to take a look at a subscriber suggestion. This is Zergo Helm Smasher. Costing two colorless, one red, one white, and one black, we get a 7-2 general. Just by himself, Zergo offers us a three turn clock for any opponent if we're able to connect. Zergo has three static abilities and one triggered ability. His first is fairly straightforward. Zergo has haste. This is surprisingly relevant, as you've probably guessed, this is going to be a Voltron slash combat based deck. His second ability reads, Zergo Helm Smasher attacks each combat if able. There's a similar ability on Goblin Rabble Master. Essentially, our haste comes at a cost. This is made even worse when you think that our general only is two toughness. Thankfully, Zergo's third ability reads, Zergo Helm Smasher has indestructible as long as it's your turn. This means you can swing without any fear of losing your general except to the occasional exile effects. Zergo's triggered ability makes combat even worse for our opponents. Not only do they have an indestructible 7-2 general swinging at them, Anytime they block with a creature and it dies to Zergo's damage, he gets a plus one plus one counter. I should warn you though, Voltron plays in a very linear style. Basically, you take one creature, slam a bunch of equipment on him, and swing and smash face. It also means that you're going to have to win through the combat step, which can sometimes be difficult unless you use ways to manipulate how many combat steps you have per turn. Please do not take this as an indication that Voltron is bad, it's just different. However, if you've been looking for a general to slam swords on and turn him sideways, Zergo is probably your man. Let's take a look at the cards. Let's just clear the air and say that all the swords of X and Y are good in a Voltron based deck. I would pay careful attention to Sword of Feast and Famine, as it can combo very well with Aggravated Assault. Assuming you can connect with an opponent, Sword of Feast and Famine and Aggravated Assault offers unlimited combat steps. It also grants plus 2 plus 2 and pro black and green which can help us get through some blockers. Further fun equipments are Tenza, Goda's Maul. Giving our general plus 3 plus 3 and Trample is not something to overlook. Hero's Blade is another fun equipment. It turns Zergo into a 10 power for toughness creature for only the casting cost of the artifact. Its wonderful triggered ability means we'll never have to pay for its equip cost as long as we cast our general. Another fun card I consider, and one of my personal favorites, is the Masterwork of Ingenuity. Not as popular as the most recent Blade of Selves, Masterwork of Ingenuity allows us to copy any equipment on the field. This is a fantastic card as it allows us to double up on any equipment we have as long as it's not legendary. I'm pretty sure the first card that came to most people's minds when Zergo was spoiled was World Slayer. Threatening to essentially restart the game with your general on the field, World Slayer is a threat that opponents must deal with immediately. It runs a little too close to mass land destruction, which is something I don't typically play, but I'm not going to tell you how to play your game and I don't know your meta, so this card might be great in your deck. The last piece of equipment that I would recommend is the Salt Suit. It might seem like a strange idea to give away your general, but being able to give an opponent Zergo and not have it attack you or a planeswalker you control can lead to some interesting developments. A few moments later. It's important to note that the Yor in the Indestructible Clause refers to the controller, not the owner. This means that Zergo is indestructible on that opponent's turn, and in addition, he can't be sacrificed. Therefore, it means an opponent has to attack with Zergo, otherwise find a way to tap him down. It's also important to note that general damage stacks even if it's under another player's control. And lastly, this is one of the more important things, since we control the equipment, we also get to decide which opponent Zergo goes to. Speaking of artifacts, there are a bunch of creatures that also like them as well. Pure Steel Paladin is one such creature, allowing us to get card draw and cheaper equip costs just for being on the board. Godo, Bandit Warlord, strikes me as one of the earlier incarnations of Stoneforge Mystic. Unfortunately, Godo costs three times the amount of mana, However, he makes up for this by bringing the artifact directly into play. He also gives you the added benefit of a free combat step every time he swings for the first time. Plus, I mean, he untaps samurais, which is kind of cool. I've always been a big fan of the archetype cycle from Born of the Gods. For only three mana, two of which has to be red, Archetype of Aggression gives all of our creatures trample. This is fantastic. Aurelia the War Leader is a fantastic addition to any Voltron based deck that's running white or red. Assuming you have her, Godo, and Zergo on the field with no blockers for an opponent, you can kill them in one turn. Zergo is also a huge fan of board wipes. Since you'll be casting them at sorcery speed, at least traditionally, it means that Zergo will be indestructible. Since we're white, it means we can clear away any opposing blockers usually for as little as 4 mana. I could easily see 3 or 4 board wipes making their way into a typical Zergo deck. Eldritch Moon gave all Voltron based decks a big boost. Sigarda's Aid 
is exactly what we want to do for one mana. It turns all of our auras and equipments into combat tricks. Think about it. You've connected once with an opponent, and they're swinging at him again. They think, oh, I can take one more hit and not die, but you flash in Fire Shrieker, giving Zergo a double strike and blowing them out. And all it cost was the normal cost of the equipment and one white mana. Assuming you're running the swords of X and Y, you gain a lot of protection from colors which can allow us to get through, but not everyone has the budget for them. Rogue's Passage offers us repeatable use for making Zergo unblockable. Similarly, Shizo, Death's Storehouse, gives Zergo fear. It has the added benefit of only costing one black, and, additionally, being able to tap for black. These two lands are great inclusions that you shouldn't overlook. I don't know if I'd recommend running too many Planeswalkers in a Zergo deck, but if I had to pick one, it'd be a Johnny Color of the Pride. Being able to pump him up with a plus one plus one counter is always good, but Johnny's true strength lies in his second ability. Having a reusable source of being able to give Zergo double strike and flying, with the only downside of having to give one of our creatures a plus one plus one counter in between every so often, is not really a bad thing for three mana. His ultimate, which gives you X2-2 two, two cats, where X is your life total, isn't bad, but it's not exactly what a Voltron deck wants to be doing. Chances are if a Johnny reaches his ultimate, you've been doing something a little wrong. Well gang, those are my thoughts and recommendations for a Zergo Helm Smasher deck. I had intended on building him back when I was planning on making a shard and wedge deck for all of the pairings, but I ended up realizing that Voltron is not my playstyle. This isn't to say that it's not for you, just this isn't the kind of deck that I like to play. Zergo is an interesting commander, and an unfortunate color pairing as he's often overshadowed by Kalia the Vast, as are a majority of all Mardu commanders. Unlike Kalia, however, Zergo plays some interesting cards you can't find in any other deck. Things like Assault Suit, World Slayer, cards that typically don't see a lot of EDH play are great in Zergo. For this, I really like him. Anyway gang, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for watching, and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.